uh, again for, for and giving me the possibility to to discuss uh, some some new issues here and it's uh, of course a pleasure to 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 meet at least virtually a bunch of very very good friends uh, so i hope you can see my screen already right yes we do Good. Uh, so let me first just uh, motivate and uh, sketch very briefly the, the, the main concepts that I will try to discuss today with you. Uh, I put this provocative name, I mean, thermodynamic of man, and you will see why actually the concepts are extremely simple. The main, I, the main motivation is, as you know, since many years, uh, we are interested on, on brain states in general. I mean, on... on, on, on on biomarkers, on phenomenological, dynamical aspects, uh, empirical aspect of brain states, uh, trying to distinguish uh, different futures associated with different level of consciousness, different level of cognitive processing, uh, uh, etc. And of course, on the mechanisms underlying those uh, phenomenological, those dynamical uh, aspects. Uh, that, that, that is the main, the, main, uh, the main problem that we are trying to address. The particular um, ansatz that we are trying to follow is uh, to assume that uh, uh, what distinguish or one aspect that could distinguish a brain state is uh, the hierarchical organization of the brain dynamics. And what I mean here is uh, the, the functional hierarchical organization of the, of the brain activity. And perhaps, I mean, the way how the different regions organize and orchestrate the other regions and the different uh, brain situations, a brain state situation, resting or, or sleep or anesthesia, or even uh, the, uh, under the execution of different cognitive tasks, uh, change uh, uh, radical. So having that uh, assumption and that motivation, I mean, there are two ways, or there, there are many ways, I mean, but I will discuss just uh, one particular way of trying to assess the, the, the hierarchical characteristic uh, of the functional organization of the brain dynamics. One is really just to measure directly with your favorite way of, uh, uh, of uh, detecting in a quantitative way functional interaction. I will just present in the next slide uh, a particular approximation that we were following uh, in the past, just to give you a flavor of, uh, of, of, the, of the type of quantification that we, uh, that we can use. And then given that particular uh, description of the functional interaction in the form of a matrix between all the pairs, then you can do topological analysis and try to say something about the hierarchy. But uh, here, what I will try to present today is uh, uh, an optional uh, way of doing that. Instead of uh, directly uh, trying to get access to the functional interactions, we will try to get access to the hierarchy of the, uh, and the, uh, of the, of the brain dynamics indirectly through a, a concepts coming from the from thermodynamics, which is the breaking of the detail balance that we will try to explain in, in the next. And we will see that by capturing this uh, breaking detail balance, we will do that uh, through the concept of non-reversibility, uh, in other ways, uh, through the concept of the arrow of time in the brain signals. And we will see how we can use that in order to distinguish different brain states. So uh, first, uh, the, just to give you a flavor of the, of, the, of, of the first alternative. I mean, if we decide really to measure the functional interaction directly, there are many, many ways. There were many labs uh, during the last decades really doing that. I just present, I mean, what we have done recently. Uh, basically, we use uh, the transfer entropy uh, or, or, or or in other words, the Grange causality, but in, in information the theoretical terms. Uh, and we apply this to the HCP. Uh, as you know, it's a large group of subjects, over a thousand subjects in different conditions, seven cognitive tasks and a resting state condition, and try to identify the topological organization of those interactions. So basically what we are plotting here in those rendering is for all these different conditions, the degree, one of the degree of the, of the if you want, Grange causality matrix, that we see which are the guys which are at the top of the hierarchy. Uh, so a kind of a functional rich club. And basically by doing the intersection of those functional rich club, we get really a couple of uh, really very interesting areas like precunius, posterior cingulates, and frontal areas, which are common really to all the situations. And therefore, they could perhaps play 
uh, an instantiation of what people call the global workspace. So those regions which are at the top of the functional uh, hierarchy, so uh, uh, the functional rich club, uh, under all the situations, all the conditions, then are orchestrating basically the organization of the dynamics in all the other cases. But here I will propose a totally different orthogonal approach. And actually, I, I think the idea was uh, first uh, uh, proposed by Christopher Lin uh, and Danny Bassett and was published recently in the PNAS. And the idea is very simple. Uh, if you have a system, of course, in our case, will be the brain. And the system is uh, really very flat, so very symmetric. There are not a huge uh, hierarchical organizations, so it's not hierarchical. Then we know that the system uh, fulfills the detail balance. There is no creating production entropy, and the system is reversible. On the other hand, if we break the symmetry and we start to build up a hierarchy in the system, then that system is non-reversible, so we can distinguish the, the arrow of time. And a, a way of quantifying this arrow of time uh, is through the uh, measuring of the production entropy. And that is exactly what uh, in this paper they characterize. They approximate the uh, production entropy, and they see that this is different under different uh, condition, for example, cognition and resting state. Here, what we do is we use exactly the same idea, but instead of measuring the production entropy, which is pretty difficult in a high dimensional system, what we do is we analyze directly the level of non-reversibility of the time signal. And by using a trick, which is extremely simple, we just compare the forward version of the signal in one node in a network or at the whole brain level, uh, and we flip that signal, and then we ask if we can distinguish exactly these two signals. If we can distinguish the, uh, the, the forward version of the signal and the artificially flip it reversal backward version of the uh, signal, then we can say that the system is uh, non-reversible. Just to give you a, a graphic uh, flavor, I mean, in some cases, this distinction is very easy. I am showing here a, a film of Christopher Nolan, Tenet, actually it's not the best film of Nolan anyway, but uh, it's, it's very nice because you can see very, very, uh, in a very plastic way, that's because there are some people moving forward in time and some people uh, moving backward in time, and you can distinguish us, uh, with your eyes, uh, who are who? I mean, so what is forward, what is backward? So it's very easy to 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 assess the non the level of non reversibility in this uh, artificial uh, movie. This is a real system, which is also by construction a, a non reversible system because it's an spin system that driven out of the equilibrium. I took that from the Chasinski paper in Nature Physics, which are presenting very very similar ideas. And I am just plotting one observable in a forward version and the and the backward uh, version. And you cannot distinguish that. It's not easy. Even if there are distinctions, so the system is really non reversible. But sometimes it's very difficult to distinguish that. And therefore, we use the same trick as uh, in that I proposed uh, in that paper by Jasinski, uh, and, and uh, underlined the ideas of uh, of Lin. So we will access the label of uh, hierarchy by assessing the label of non reversibility. But instead of measuring that through the production entropy, we assess that by characterizing really the level of the distinguishability between the forward version and the artificially created backward reversal version. And we do this in several ways. I mean, one, one way just to start the discussion would be uh, by using a, a classifier. We use a deep learning classifier that we call TENET, by the way, Temporal Evolution Deep Learning Classifier. And basically, because we are generating those signals, the forward version and the backward version, uh, by hand, and we know who is whom, we can uh, train the classifier in a, in a supervised way. And then when we test this on a cross validation, we know that if uh, the performance of the classifier is very high, then we are really non reversible. There is a high hierarchical organization and the system is in non equilibrium. So basically, the performance of the classifier is, is, is telling us a quantification of the label of hierarchical organization. If it is low, it's of course exactly the contrary. Just uh, to give you a flavor of some of the results, again, with the HCP, 
uh, data set, uh, what we see here uh, is the level of uh, non-equilibrium or the level of non-reversibility or the level of hierarchical organization uh, uh, reflected in this number here on the y-axis, just concentrate on the left panel. For the difference condition, resting, which has the lowest level, but it's of course non-reversible, it's out of the equilibrium, but compared with all the other cognitive tasks, it's the lowest one. And then for all the other seven cognitive tasks that are used in the HCP, we are ordering this increasing way, uh, the difference level of cognitive. And that makes sense because when you start to do some computation, you have to break even more the balance because you have to generate some really interactions, uh, uh, directional interaction between the different brain areas. And that is reflected indirectly uh, this hierarchy in the level of non-reversibility. The, the, that panel is not interesting in this context. I mean, it's just uh, because we are doing this in a slide window, it's just uh, it's interesting to see that it's also this label uh, of non-reversibility is changing in time. So it's showing the level of non-stationality. So another example is uh, in a totally different context. Uh, the, uh, what I was showing before, as I said, was uh, HCP, so fMRI ball signals. In this case, we use another species, monkeys, uh, our public data from the NeuroTyco um, database uh, uh, are four different monkeys implanted in one hemisphere with the ECOC. So basically local field potentials uh, type of uh, information and under many different situations. Uh, and we concentrate here just on, on manipulation of consciousness. For example, we will contrast uh, awake against sleep and awake against different uh, anesthetic. And what we see here is at the group level for all monkeys, all sessions, exactly the same type of, uh, of quantification, the level of non-reversibility. And uh, as we see, it's very significant in all conditions. And it's going in the right direction. So in the unconscious condition, it's really the, uh, going down, meaning that the hierarchy is more flattened. Uh, and uh, and is uh, uh, revealed through the, the increasing of the level of reversibility. So beautiful to see this also in anesthetical, before the anesthetical, during the anesthetical, for example, this case, propofol, and then the recovery, how you go up again uh, in the level of uh, hierarchy. Interesting is the case of ketamine, which is going exactly in the other direction, and this is probably the reason why ketamine is. is uh, uh, it's another type of drug. Uh, so just to finish, uh, uh, my last slide is uh, about, the, we have this phenomenology, we have this, uh, this uh, kind of biomarker, level of non reversibility for assessing the, the hierarchy. And we see that that is pretty sensitive to different type of brain states, cognitive states, or a different level of consciousness. What we wanted to, to study is now a mechanistic understanding of that. And for that, we use, as you know, our favorite framework, so a, a whole brain model. Whole brain model uh, basically integrate the underlying uh, anatomical structure with your favorite uh, dynamical description of the node label to fit some aspect of the data. Here, what we use is uh, basically uh, also HCP data, but in this case it's rest and movie watching. It's a seven Tesla and three Tesla, both version. Uh, and uh, we use a Hoff model, a particular description of the dynamic because we have very good experience with that and it has a high level of accuracy. But the essential trick is that we train and we infer an effective connectivity. So instead of training just a global parameter, we really change on the existing fibers that are described by the anatomical uh, DTI tractography. We change the conductivity values of, uh, of each of those fibers in such a way that we are trying to fit not only the functional connectivity, but we fit the functional connectivity and the shifted version of the functional connectivity in order to catch really uh, the, the time in the forward version and in the backward version. So that we are checking, uh, we are fitting not only the correlation, but also the label of, uh, of the non-reversibility, so the, the empirical arrow of time. That is possible 
uh, and the results are really uh, very nice. I mean, if we just check the level of non-responsibility as before, just uh, in a model-free way, it's very interesting to see that uh, task, as we have seen before, is uh, of course much more structured, hierarchical structured as rest, but movies are down, are more flattened. Probably this is the reason why they are more relaxing. And the, and the explanation, the, the, empiric, the mechanistic explanation is uh, in this uh, effective connectivity matrix that we call G, I mean, just to distinguish from, from the standard version of the effective connectivity matrix, or the generative effective connectivity matrix. And if we use that for classifying, for example, the movies or the resting, we get a very, very good level of classification, much better if we use just the functional connectivity matrix. And what is astonishing is, for example, there are two different type of movies, uh, Hollywood movies or creative common type of movies. And uh, functional connectivity is really practically at the chance level for distinguishing the two type of movies. And the, 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 the generative effect of connectivity is really a very uh, achieve a very high level of accuracy. So I think with this, I, I, I start the, the, the discussion, I mean, about the, the plausibility of this framework, the phenomenological aspect and the mechanistic aspect to assess a hierarchical organization. Thank you very much, Gustavo, thanks a lot. Very exciting, very